Hey everyone, it's Ian here from the operations crew. You must know by now that our new season's theme is the captivating cube of rapacity. Now let me walk you through some of the exciting highlights in this fresh season. First up, let's talk about the cube of rapacity season's gameplay. In both the main story and Nethroam stages, you might run into monsters that mark with greed by the cube of rapacity. When you defeat these unique mobs, you will receive a desired crystal an item exclusive to that map and can be taken out, out of the map. Once you've taken down the stage boss, the cube of rapacity will make its appearance. Offer it a specific number of desire crystals to receive random rewards. But beware, don't get carried away by greed, or you might anger the cube and lose all the rewards you've collected so far. The cube of rapacity will also attract unique and powerful bosses and special monsters in each stage which will introduce new challenges and greater rewards in the stage clearing experience. We've introduced a new talent called Avarice Code, exclusive to this season's gameplay that lets you alter the rewards or challenges presented by the Cube of Rapacity. This means you can enjoy a totally unique gaming experience with different season talent strategies, at a very small cost. Of course, there's much more to the season exclusive gameplay than just this. When you draw rewards from the Cube of Rapacity, you might also get a Cube of Craving instead, which is packed with even rarer and more valuable prizes. Additionally, the Cube of Rapacity drops a unique item known as Desired Beads. Desired Beads represent the physical embodiment of Cube of Rapacity's sway over human desires. Black market merchants are more than happy to trade their most precious wares for those coveted items. The special monsters I mentioned earlier will also drop an item known as Desire Core. Desire Cores serve as tokens to challenge new supreme boss called Lord Bearer. As the supreme judge of the High Court of Desire, this formidable enemy presents a tougher challenge for hunters than ever before. Upon defeating the Lord Bearer, players can expect to receive special and incredibly attractive items, including the season's new precious item, Unifying Wedge, which can be used to restore Divinity Slates. The Divinity Slate I mentioned earlier plays a crucial role in the Statue of the New God development system in this new season. The New God has bestowed upon hunters a fresh talent panel, Statue of the New God. Unlike previous talent panels, hunters can now combine and place multiple Divinity Slates on the Statue of the New Gods, granting them potent buffs. Each Divinity Slate is associated with a specific god and can hold up to two random talent affixes related to that god. This allows hunters to tap into the power of the six gods without being constrained by the differences among the gods. Hunters can also enhance divinity slates through a unique branding method. However, once branded, these divinity slates become untradeable. Each successful branding either adds a new affix or upgrades an existing one. During the enhancement process, there's a slim chance of converting an upgraded powerful affix into the new god's exclusive talent affix known as the Divine Entropy. Divine Entropy grants hunters the ability to control the order and chaos. Keep in mind though, each Divinity Slate can only be branded a limited number of times, making it more challenging to acquire Divine Entropy. Unwanted Divinity Slate can be broken down into Divinity Fragments, which can either be crafted into new random Divinity Slates or traded freely. The new god has also granted hunters access to new legendary Divinity Slates. These powerful slates come with Divine Entropy, amplify the effects of the Order and Chaos, and even enable hunters to consume the power of the Six Gods for even more powerful buffs. Having covered the season exclusive gameplay and the new system, it's finally time to unveil the new heroes. Hey, I'm talking to you! Ugh. Where did you lock up the old man? <laughs> You wanted to lock me up too? I am big! <sighs> no place in this world can confine an escape. Artist! It isn't here! Not here either! Get out of my way! Moto old man, where are you? Uh, forget it! There's nothing an explosion won't solve! 
time, just like an explosion. And an explosion is just thing! <coughs> you rascal! Is this how you save someone? <laughs> Calm down, old man. Check out the fireworks. <gasps> if we don't blow up this broken world, how can we create a new one? Bing, also known as the escapist, famed for his flashy and powerful explosive skills. Anything that lingers in his hands for even a moment turns into a powerful bomb, constantly causing trouble for him, and that's why Bing's survival hinges on exceptional ability to escape. Escape is Bing's first hero trait, Blast Nova, loads projectiles into his beautifully crafted yet deadly bombs, which explode in a star-shaped pattern upon detonation. This enables Bing to take down enemies from more distant and secure positions. While Bing's bomb throwing speed remains constant, hunters can learn traits that enable him to throw multiple bombs at once, convertibly attach bombs to enemies, or add special effects to bombs when thrown. The more bombs on the battlefield, the greater the explosion damage inflicted on enemy caught in the blast. In essence, tossing as many bombs as possible before setting them off is key for escape his Bing to deal massive damage. Thea's hero trait, Incarnation of the Gods, emerged when Thea ceased to be a mere conduit for the god's will and opted to become a scepter-wielding deity in her own right. Similar to Wisdom of the Gods, Incarnation of Gods consumes blessings with its hero trait skills to grant short-term explosive buffs. What sets Incarnation of the Gods apart from Wisdom of the Gods is that its divine realm doesn't really deal damage directly. Instead, it aids Thea in converting the god's blessings. When Thea is outside her divine realm, she transforms her tenacity blessings into agility blessings, carrying out the goddess of hunting's edicts. This enables her to deal unimaginable damage to enemies with full life, based on the number of agility blessing stacks. Against powerful enemies who are unwilling to be punished, Thea can enter her divine realm, which converts agility blessings into tenacity blessings, allowing her to borrow the power of the god of the might which grants her a defense boost according to the number of tenacity blessing stacks and deals a lot of damage to enemies with low life. However, becoming the incarnation of the gods comes at a significant cost. As Thea gains divine power, her fragile body must withstand unbearable negative effects. If she cannot overcome these challenges, her transformation into a god will only lead her to a trap of her own making. Thus, this hero trait requires hunters to strategize about acquiring the gods' blessings and entering the Divine Realm at the right moment to convert Divine Powers. They must also find ways to cope with a series of negative effects. The new hero, Escape is Being, can be unlocked by purchasing the Season Pass once the open beta begins, while the new hero trait, Incarnation of Gods, can be acquired with Primal Crest or traded for hero emblems. In this season, the new skills added are mainly Sentry skills followed by one Shadow Strike skill and one Summer skill. Thunder Spike is a fresh Shadow Strike skill. When you land a critical strike with Thunder Spike, it guaranteed to inflict shock on enemies with a certain area. If the Shadows of Thunder Spike scores a critical strike on shocked enemies, shock damage is applied one additional time to those hit by the Shadows. With a high critical strike rating and numerous Shadows, this skill can efficiently inflict shock on enemies within range and apply shock damage. This makes Thunder Spike a standout skill for clearing maps or battling tough enemies. Ghost Blade Inheriar, the Sentry skill. Ghost Blade Inheriar summons a dagger wielding Inheriar that targets and attacks one nearby enemy, dealing damage based on the hunter's weapon damage. Its unique feature is that it inherits the hunter's multi strike chance bonuses. When Ghost Blade Inheriar performs the final blow of a multi strike, it triggers a violent explosion at the target and gains an additional damage bonus based on the multi-strike chance. Furthermore, for each additional projectile quantity, Ghost Blade Inheriar targets one more nearby enemy. This allows hunters to adjust Ghost Blade Inheriar's rapid clearing ability according to their specific needs. Arrow Inheriar summers an Inheriar armed with bow and arrows. It fires three arrows into the sky, dealing area damage based on the hunter's weapon damage upon landing. Arrow Inheriar's arrows can deal damage to the same enemy when they land. This means that when multiple Inheriar are present on the battlefield simultaneously, they can carpet bomb enemies in a vast area and inflict massive damage on a single target. It's important to note that Arrow Inheriar's damage increases over time. 
so when facing tough enemies, avoid hastily summoning new Inheriar, as this could remove your initial arrow Inheriar and actually reduce your damage. Thunder Core is a lightning spell sentry that periodically unleashes several thunder strikes at nearby enemies, dealing area damage. The number of thunder strikes released by Thunder Core benefits from the jump bonus, chaining enemies together in a lightning grid to inflict damage over a large area. When targeting a single enemy, Thunder Core concentrates all its thunder strikes on that enemy. I hope Thunder Core will offer robust firepower support for hunters in all situations. Frost Core is a unique cold spell sentry that fires spiral projectiles, bouncing between enemies as they strike. What sets Frost Core apart is its ability to extract frost by rating from enemies, significantly increasing the damage dealt by each hit. However, if a hunter plays too many Frost Cores, excessive frost by rating will be consumed after just one volley of attacks. As a result, it's essential to effectively increase enemies' frost by rating and balance the consumption of frost core thus maximizing its benefits. Summer Green Phantom is a new Thinsetic Troop Summer skill. Green Phantom attacks targets with beam skills, and its beam skills become more potent as hunters grow stronger. Every few beam attacks, the next beam will cover a wider strange and deal higher damage. Unlike other Thinsetic Troop skills, when using a Summer Green Phantom skill, there's no need to manually activate it. The Green Phantom is automatically summoned periodically until the upper limits is reached. When hunters actively use the skill, they promote all green phantoms to instantly move to the target location and fire their destructive light cannon at the target, dealing high burst damage. We have prepared 13 new pieces of legendary gear for hunters in the cube of rapacity season. Today, I will introduce two pieces of legendary gear that have powers granted by the new god. The legendary belt Law of the Supreme Will has Order and Chaos buffs, which are a pair of mutually exclusive buffs provided by the new god. It causes the wearer to lose order and gain chaos. This legendary gear increases cooldown recovery speed and movement speed when you have a high amount of order. To utilize this gear effectively, focus on defeating enemies before your order runs out. The key to this is to kill enemies quickly before losing all of your orders. The other legendary gear is called Breaking the Internal Wrist. When equipping this gear, the blessings of the six gods bring unavoidable debuffs due to the going against the will of the gods effect. However, this pair of gloves also grants you the power to devour the power of the gods. Every 4 seconds, you will devour all blessings of the six gods on you and release an empowered skill based on the number of blessings devoured. Thus, hunters using this piece of gear will need to strategize ways to deal with the negative effects while obtaining unique and powerful buffs. Hero relics and hero traits are closely related to one another. There are numerous legendary hero relics and legendary hero memories to choose from in the new season, which creates more build possibilities. In previous tests, the overall performance of the spell system was relatively weak, making it especially challenging to transition and progress smoothly in the mid-game. For this reason, we have designed Spellburst, a new developed system for spells. With Spellburst, hunters can consume Spellburst stacks when using or triggering channeled spell skills. Based on the number of Spellburst stacks consumed, they can automatically cast multiple spell skills in a burst within a short period of time, allowing for easy semi-automatic spell casting. Spellburst is a powerful development system for spells. It enables hunters to have a relaxed and smooth map clearing experience while also allowing them to move around nimbly avoid enemy damage. However, Spellburst can only be consumed when it's at maximum stacks, so don't forget to upgrade the charge speed of Spellburst when upgrading cast speed. We believe the additional of Spellburst will bring spells to prominence this season. It's time for spells to reign supreme. Command is a new mechanic design for summoning builds, specifically addressing the monotony of using synthetic troop minions due to the lack of related attributes that can be developed by adding command we have introduced additional development paths for synthetic troop minions and significantly increased the damage dealt by synthetic troops. Since command will always drop down to zero quickly, changing the combat rhythm on synthetic troop minions can be achieved by developing command. Hunters can choose to develop command in a stable manner to ensure it is always within a certain range, allowing synthetic troop minions to deal consistent damage. Alternatively, special development methods can be employed to gain a large amount of command in a short period of time, making synthetic troop minions attack wildly in an instant to deal massive burst damage. 
However, this approach may cause you to lose all of your command quickly after bursting. As a result, the key to defeating powerful enemies with an army of synthetic troops lies in learning how to effectively gain and maintain command. This new mechanic offers a more engaging and dynamic experience for hunters who prefer summoning builds. The new crafting system in Torchlight Infinite aims to retain the advantage of the previous system while addressing issues such as the lack of excitement and surprises during crafting. The new system consists of two components, prototype crafting and targeted processing. Prototype crafting allows hunters to lock up to two affixes on a piece of gear and re-randomize it into a prototype gear with up to four fixed affixes. This process retains advanced affixes on gear, but the plasticity of the original gear decreases with each craft. Prototype crafting is not possible on gear with zero plasticity. This method enhances the looting experience, turning gear drops with advanced affixes into valuable crafting materials and making the crafting process more exciting. Targeted processing replaces the old crafting method. While hunters can still use Amber to craft desired affixes, they no longer have the option to save or revert affixes when crafting a single affix. Instead, they can pay a certain cost to revert the gear to its initial states before target processing. It is recommended that hunters use prototype crafting to create good prototype gear and then use target processing to craft other affixes. This combination makes obtaining powerful gear easier than before but crafting the best gear becomes more challenging and strategic, enhancing the overall crafting experience for players. Torchlight Infinite is constantly working on game balance adjustments and optimizations based on player feedback and testing. In the new season, many targeted improvements have been made to hero traits, skills, talents, and gear, with a special focus on legendary gear. More detailed information on these changes will be provided in the season update announcement in the community. Continual updates and optimizations are being made to enhance various aspects of the game. Some examples include single hit damage limit can now exceed 2.1 billion, natural map affix customization, skill effect transparency adjustments, auto channel for skills and other switch features, advanced search in the trade house, including searching for the repeated affixes. Path of the Brave improvements, addressing issues like the inability to pick up reverse after dying. Pack Spirits build configurations. These ongoing optimizations aim to provide players with a better gaming experience and ensure that the game continues to evolve and improving over time. In the new Cube of Rapacity season, there will be a variety of new pack spirits with different appearances released, including a season gameplay exclusive drop pad, a general drop pad, and two battle pads. Drop pads will help increase loading efficiency while battle pads will assist players when they hit growth bottlenecks. A variety of new outfits will also be released in the new season, with some being sold directly and others being released in boon events. Keep an eye on game announcements and boon events to discover more about these appearances. We are looking forward to seeing you guys in the new season and are committed to providing a stable and smooth gaming experience. For more detailed information of the new season, Cube of Rapacity, stay tuned to the community announcements.